Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Winners and Winers Radio. I am your host, Scott Steen, lead handicapper at winnersandwiners.com. And I'm your co-host, Scott Rochelle, senior handicapper over winnersandwiners.com. And together, we make up Winners and Winers Radio. Give us an hour and we'll give you the winners. No winners. Only winners, Scotty. How'd yeah. your day go yesterday? Went okay. I uh, ended up having the Giants team total over. I had the Giants money line in the eighth inning at plus 390. Great price there. Giants uh, game of the double win because they scored four runs in the ninth. Other than that, didn't really do much else. Kind of just hung out. You? Well, we had, a, we had a couple of nice plays, and we had one of them on a game we're going to talk about here in a minute, so I won't, I won't spoil that. But we did also hit the uh, Minnesota Twins Cleveland Indians under. As you, did you see the, uh, the rookie, the Ryan, that kid for uh, Minnesota making his second start? Uh, I believe he was dealing. Six, six innings, no hit ball, buddy. Six and a third, actually. Can't pull him. No. Oh, no, no. He was only uh, – even think he was in the 70s pitch count-wise. He was fine. He was Disrespectful. In, Can't pull him there. No, they, they, and they didn't. They, they, he gave up a solid base hit. But, yeah, uh, yeah that was uh, – so that was – we had first five – we had, uh, we had first five under there, and Tristan McKenzie was on the other side. And, you know, they did well. So, yeah, that worked out well. I'm excited, man. It's Thursday, Scott. It's the day we've been waiting for since, well, the last time we saw Tampa Bay, right? Something like that. Unfortunately for me, I'm going to pretty much watch Dallas have a losing record before any other team in the league, but it should be entertaining. Oh, man, spoilers. Spoilers. Don't, you know, we're, we're, we're going to talk about this game here a little bit later. We don't want to give everything away just yet. I gave away everything. You know, the Tampa money line of what, minus 400? <sighs> minus 380? Whatever it's at right now? Uh, yeah. Calm, calm down, Vegas day. We're not, we're not giving the, the, is that your, is that your whale play of the day, Scott? Tampa my day, triple my... max whale lock supreme, uh, combo deal. Get ready for our 5,000 star whale play. Fade the public sharks. 1 million unit lock of the century. Something like that. You just have to use that. By the way, we do that. We, we have that on tap for when we do our contest on uh, Saturday and Sunday, as we put out our special NFL and college football editions, you and I are going head to head, mano a mano. Anyway, hey, that'd, let's be a, that'd be a fun meme uh, segment. That if we wanted to do that, just pick the chalkiest play on the board that's going to win. <laughs> we've we've come together. See that, that we should just start doing that. Take every the Dodgers day. plus six and a half runs at minus yes. five thousand. That's right. Go yeah. ahead. You can go ahead and lock that one up. Mm-hmm. All right, my friend. Well, let's talk about some people that maybe weren't fortunate enough to have those whale plays yesterday and it didn't turn out well in the end they might have thought they had a winner for a while uh i may be one of those people but you know who you are the rest of you you don't know you're going to find out right now on our first segment of the day it's call the cops all right scott let's talk about this rockies game if you had the rockies plus one and a half up against the Giants, as previously mentioned by you, you're in great shape. You led four to three after eight innings. You're at home. The Rockies win at home all the time. Second best home record in baseball. Uh, Giants, they had no respect for that home record of the Colorado Rockies because they went out and hung a four spot on the hapless Rocks in the ninth inning. And Colorado not only loses the game, but they end up losing by three so your sayonara rockies money line sayonara rockies run line and it's time for the rest of you to just call the cops and the second one unfortunately was something we both had because it was our bet the farm play we had the blue jays and yankees first five under five and a half you had no runs in the first three innings then toronto scored three in the top of the fourth you have three runs going into the bottom of the fifth Two guys on base, two outs, 3-2 count. Brett Gardner up at the plate. He never goes yard until Damn. yesterday because he hit a, he absolutely launched one, and the Yankees ended up scoring three runs there on the home run, 3-3 three to three after five. And just to punch us in the face a little bit more, the Yankees did not score again after that. That's just shameful. One just pitch away. Gardner, rid- three-run homer. Ridiculously shameful right there. And – to finish it up, this is a game that I was on the right side of, Scott. This is if you had the Royals on the money line. Playing the Orioles, you were in great shape because Mike Miner was kneeling. 
absolutely getting it done. It's the first time, Scott, in 28 starts that he has left the game without giving up a run. He went six shutout innings. Salvador Perez added on a couple of insurance runs there in the eighth. Five nothing Royals heading into the bottom of the eighth. We're in great shape. Uh, the Orioles, uh, they went out and scored nine runs in the bottom of the eighth. It was a nonstop cavalcade of stars, Scott, that hammered against the uh, Royals bullpen. Did they bat around once or like one and a half for how it worked I've, out? I've got to think one and a half. I mean, I'd assume so. You've got nine. You've got nine runs, three outs. There's twelve right there. So if you left anybody on base, you're halfway through the order again. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. brutal. Just brutal. Royals lose nine to eight. However, well, that's the worst part. They scored three runs in the top of the ninth just to make it fun, and then they fell short. Yeah, Benintendi had a uh, a three run homer. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It didn't didn't matter. Royals lose nine to eight. So just and uh, we had the right side of that. We did not have a we did not have a side. We didn't have the Royals. We didn't have the Orioles. We didn't care. Had the over, Scott. <laughs> Had the over nine and a half. We were looking at five to zip with three half innings left. And it ended up going from five to 17 in an inning and a half. And actually just an inning because the Orioles ended up not batting in the bottom of the ninth. So things change, my friend. It's never, it's never over until it's under. Yep, pretty much. All right. So there you go. Those are and those were three good ones, buddy. Those were <laughs> absolutely called the cops worthy. On the other side of the coin, these are the people that had those nice easy plays. Never a doubt, no sweat victories. You could just sit back, take it easy because you had the rocket chair. So the first one was between the Mets and the Marlins, total of seven, which means you already know his pitching, you have Alcantara on the mound because why wouldn't he be for a total of seven in Miami but you had one run in the second inning one run in the seventh inning that was it for the nine innings however they were tied at one to one so you have to potentially sweat out some extra innings no you don't Mets did not score in the top of the 10th Marlins scored in the bottom of the 10th and the Marlins won two to one so under seven never in doubt you're a Marlin do you swim it off in the bottom of the ninth as opposed to walk it off or the bottom of the 10th rather uh it's a good question I you got it. We got to consult some people about that. All right, buddy. Uh, we have by, four by the way, did, by the way, did you see the cinnamon toast crunch guy behind home plate in the game two days ago? I did. I did. That was something else, wasn't it? What's up with that? No idea. Okay. I thought maybe it was a meme that you kids are all aware of that old guys like me have no idea what's going on. I I don't know. Uh, he did a good job calling strikes behind the plate. Oh, he did. He thrown up. I think they threw him out. I only saw him for the first two innings, and then he just disappeared. We're going to have to ask you to leave, Cinnamon Crunch, Cinnamon Crunch guy. Mm-hmm. So, okay, Scott, since you brought that up, let me ask you: What does that look like? Because if you didn't see it, it was a big foam square costume, mm-hmm. probably four feet by four feet, something like that, maybe four like and a half. The average size of a Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, how does that work? heading into the stadium do you I have it? i thought you were going to say heading into the bathroom there's no, a lot it, of questions to be asked is it is it folded up what we have a back what are you doing how do you you don't just walk in the turnstile dressed as a cinnamon toast crunch square i'm hoping that marlins park sponsored by the cereal because maybe that would explain how they got a guy on the inside okay i don't okay. know it's a good question maybe they left it in the restroom godfather style Maybe. Who knows? You went, went in there right before intermission? I know that that's about a day late because that was about two days ago, but we didn't talk about it. I was curious if you did see that. I did. I absolutely did see this. All right. So uh, this is a game that I talked about earlier. As the uh, If you had the full game, Twins, Indians, under nine. That went very well as uh, the uh, Indians put up one run in the fifth, one run, or excuse me, the Twins did one run in the fifth, one run in the seventh. One run in the eighth, and that's it. Bob's your uncle. Game ended up three zippy as Ryan and the Twins took care of business. If you had the under nine there, that was never in doubt. You were sitting in the rocking chair. And the last one, you had the Rays and the Red Sox under 10. You know, the last two games, you had about 45 runs being scored, so you figured 10. Got to take the over there. I mean, you're going to have a bunch of runs. Not quite. You had zero runs in the first seven innings. Then the Rays ended up scoring one. Red Sox scored two, game ended two to one. 
So all the offense that they had for the first two days, I guess they ran out of gas in the series finale. Yep, and that was a play that I had. I had the raise there on the money line. So you're up one nothing. I was, you know, it's not quite a bad beat. It can't can be a bad beat when you're, you know, when you're up one zip. But it wasn't, it wasn't the best. We certainly had a shot at it. So yeah. very good. All right. So you know what? I feel like this guy's made the list before. I feel like we've roasted him for this before. But this is absolutely necessary. This is a re-roast that is absolutely on point. Scott, I'm anxious to find out who's wearing the golden feed bag today. Who's strapping it on for today's donkey of the day? You want to do it? Uh, yeah, sure. So the donkey of the day today is going to be a coach in the NFL, and it is Kyle Shanahan, who's the coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Now, we know that week one is starting today because it's Thursday, which means that the other teams are playing on most of them Sunday. Now, it's a college move to not announce who the starting quarterback's going to be. It appears that Shanahan is not tipping his hand yet because he has yet to announce that Garoppolo or Trey Lance are starting week one. What makes this, though, the real donkey of the day is the fact that he's still not officially announcing who's going to be the first starter, even though Garoppolo has basically declared himself the starter for the last three weeks, and Shanahan's still just going with the charade they don't know what they're doing. What is this? Your starting quarterback's pretending – or no, your coach is pretending he doesn't know what he's doing when the starting quarterback's ruining the entire secret by basically telling the entire media, I got a good feeling about who's going to start this game. Yes, I know, because they told you you were going to be starting three weeks ago. What is this? All right. So I will say that if the season starts and Trey Lance comes out as the starting quarterback, giving us the greatest okie doke in NFL history, we will come on here Monday and apologize. Garoppolo would be wingman of the year if he's not starting this game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, Garoppolo doesn't seem like that good-natured kind of guy that would be taking it really well and in on the joke, you know? He's not even hiding it, though. He's laughing with the press. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I got a good feeling about this one. It's like, we, we get it. It's, it's fine. Everybody who's starting the game on Sunday, take one step forward. Not so quick, Trey. Mm -hmm. Sorry, buddy. Pretty All much. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't, you know, he did this, he did this Bush League move when we roasted him two weeks ago. I'm just saying, so if you're going was, to, we thought it was Bush League at that point. If you're going to keep the charade going, maybe tell your starting quarterback to not act like he's the starter at every press conference you have. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I, I don't see what the point of this is. <laughs> no, no point at all. All right, Scott. Well, we always we don't always have one that's uh, where the odds makers are super drunk. We had to dig a little bit for this one, but you know what? As it ends up, they were a little drunk here. Let's find out where and why the odds makers were drunk today. Scott, turning to soccer and football to the rest of the world we're looking at this world cup qualifier between canada and el salvador canada scott minus 200 even though they had not won a game yet in qualifying and not surprisingly they still haven't won a game in qualifying as el salvador put an l beat down on them winning three to zip odds makers what are you doing here guys L beat down. We got to start using that more. That's good stuff right there. Yeah. That's, that belongs that's, on a shirt, but completely on the fly. Hard to believe. Huh? Now El Salvador money line was around six to one. So I'm not saying that, that you should have bet that, but even for plus a half on El Salvador or something, Canada, two draws, El Salvador, two draws. Why is Canada minus 200 on the money line? They haven't won anything. No, they haven't. Well, they have now. Well, no, they, they haven't won anything. They just refused to tie one time. El Salvador finally won something. That's what I'm saying. El Salvador won. I'm sorry. Yes, El Salvador has won now. Canada, Scott, are they not going to make the? Uh, are they going to make the tournament from our way too early assessment of the World Cup World Cup qualifying? Uh, of course, Canada has a shot because the U.S. won yesterday, but that also means Honduras got zero points as well. So Canada still has a shot there. Very good day for the U.S. though, after a pretty brutal first half. That's why they weren't on the donkey of the day. It's because they won the game. <laughs> four, but, four, un, four unanswered, baby. Four unanswered. Remember we, yesterday we said not to panic. It's still too soon. Yeah, it turns out this team 
might not be great, but they're good enough to not embarrass themselves yet. Very good. We'll be right back right after this. Solid. Solid. You cut it at 15? <laughs> Apparently. Cool. I'm a little, uh, little premature there, buddy. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if it matters for us. Does it matter? Yes, we'll have to cut it again at thirty. I'll cut that. I'll cut that minute out. Everything's in a minute. It's still on YouTube, so I guess we got two YouTube breaks in between. Oh yeah, you guys on YouTube. I'm sure we're getting. You really confused me. You're like you really wanted to make that 15 minute mark, and I'm like, what are we doing here? I was so proud. We were like right on it. We missed it by like two seconds. I'm like, shut up, Rachel. Shut up. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it. And then yeah, I don't know what you were trying to hit. (laughs) But sure, just want to be really good about the uh, about the IDs. All good. Dead seconds, buddy. Cool. We'll go, we'll go to 31 now. <laughs> Odds on me remembering that. Uh, Zero. Five to one against. Quick reminder, you are listening to Winners and Winers Radio. Give us an hour and we'll give you the winners. Well, Scott, even though this one didn't work out in my favor, I have to, I have to, I have, game recognizes this game right here. We've got, we've got a hero. We really do. Let's find out who today's gambling hero of the day is i'm gonna let you do it today because this was a game that you were personally involved in yes and i actually sent you this i actually sent you this angry text except i sent it to my wife i was gonna say i didn't get anything I said, my, my wife my wife i get the question mark from my wife i'm like what's that about and i look and I'm, i had actually sent it to her instead mm-hmm. of you so Here's the deal, Scott. Let me set the stage for you. It's one nothing, Tampa Bay in the eighth inning. Hunter Renfro, he hits the dinger for the two-run shot. Two outs, by the way. Two outs as he hits the dinger. Thank you very much. And they take the 2-1 lead. And then with two outs in the ninth inning, Joey Wendell strokes it into the outfield easy double but no he wants more with two outs he heads to third hunter renfro remember him from the home run fame yeah same guy throws him out at third base that's the third out that's your ball game hunter renfro congratulations because you everybody that had boston were their gambling hero of the day I know originally you were going to roast Wendell for it as the gambling hero, just, you know, for yes. to be yes. kind of petty about it. But Renfro, when you hit the home run and you make the walk-off defensive play or whatever you want to call it, that usually wins you the award. What's the one rule that every little leaguer knows across the world, Scott? What is it? You know what it is? Keep your eye on the ball. No, don't, I, don't make, make the third, the out, third out at third base. Ever let alone one run down with two outs in the nine. I'm a big fan of uh, see the ball, be the ball, whatever that means. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I got you. See the ball, be the ball. No, don't make the third out at her at third, you donkey. Good God. Okay. Scott, I'm bored with all these golfers. I got to admit, the uh, – the DeChambeau Kepka thing kind of fizzled out. I'm, I'm not. I'm not buying it. Well, no, Kepka's injured, so I don't know if there's really anything going on. I don't, I don't care for this new season. I got. I got to be honest with you. I, I miss some. I miss the retro stuff. So. You mean the new season that's over because they just did the FedEx Championship? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I didn't. I did not care for it. Uh, I would not. Two stars would not recommend. I'm just saying now there's a new new season because the other one just ended. Probably not going to care for that one either. Just okay. but maybe because. Maybe. There's some news. Steve Stricker, who is the uh, what, Scott? Ryder Cup champ, R- Ryder Cup captain, correct? Uh, yes. I mean, you asked me and then answered your own question, but yes. Man, you got to give me a chance to answer. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Okay, according to – I'll let you do it. What, according to Steve Stricker, what's going on, Scott? So, he has been talking – Woods is going to maybe come back. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, he's been talking to Tiger because Tiger, of course, has been involved in the Ryder stuff, but he's not going to be a team captain this year not really involved as he's rehabbing, but Stricker did tell the public that Tiger is planning on returning to professional golf at some point. Not really sure when, but he said that he is not retiring and that he wants to continue playing. That surprise you at all? No. No, it is not. Now, if he is able to come back and do it, 
at an elite level and even be competitive on a week to week basis, I think that would surprise me. I'm okay. just, I'm because, you know, they call what is his master's win in what 18 was one of the greatest comebacks of all time. Right. As far as, you know, being down and injured and everything. And what, now he would, has a car accident with another broken one. Right. Where would this rank on the chart if he were to somehow win another golf tournament or God forbid, win another major right above the last one. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I think it would be just taking it to a new level. What do you, what do you think? Do you think he comes back and plays competitive golf? Uh, I think he's going to play golf competitively. I don't know if he's going to be competitive in the leaderboards, but he's going to try. Okay. I'm rooting for him. I think we all are, but you never want to count out the greatest golfer of all time. But when you have so many injuries and I'm kind of just thankful you can still walk at this point in your, in your life. Right. I'm not really focusing much on how much, how well you're doing under par. You know what I mean? The fact that he's playing in general would be a victory in itself. Let me, let me ask you though, because you hear about this from guys that retire a lot from professional sports, regardless of what sport it is. You're 45 years old. You're Tiger Woods. If you don't play golf, what are you going to do? I mean, literally, what are you going to do? I'm a stay at home dad. I don't know. Run the whatever business you got making billions of dollars. No, but you don't want to. That's no fun. You got it's, not, people... it's not fun. I don't know what else you do. You buy a sports team, you pull a Mahomes move. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, I think these guys have this emptiness that I, they can't abide the emptiness. I think they have to go out and compete. And I think it's even a bigger case for Tiger because he was raised basically playing golf out the womb. Right. So right. this is really all he knows. Yeah. I mean, you know, no, we're not, and we're not going to say that's all, you know, but it's, Certainly a gigantic part of his life and his identity. When I, your I, life revolves around playing golf minimum, what do you think, four hours a day for the last 40 years? Yeah. That's a lot of golf, and it's yeah, tough to build up hobbies when you're constantly on the golf course. Yeah, I, I don't know, but that's, I, I think for, if nothing else, that'll drive him to give it a shot. Yeah. I, I wish him the best. I think the game is a better place with Tiger. I'll watch him. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You, can, you tell me that the ratings aren't going to be better for a 46-year-old Tiger Woods returning to the AT&T Open than they would be for Kepka and DeChambeau snipping each other on Twitter. The real test of the ranking of the ratings is to determine what the ratings would be pre-cut and post-cut if Tiger misses the cut. Yeah, that's very true. That's, so. also, that's also very true. Hey, speaking of Tiger Woods, I wanted to hit you with this real quick because this was in the New York Post today. Uh, Paige Spurnack says that she is more popular than Tiger Woods because she has 4, 400,000 more Instagram followers. Is that really true? Do you so, think she's the most popular golfer in the world? I was going to say you just said golfer. I have no idea who that is. Is that a female golfer? It is. It I is. have she no known, idea she, who that is. She is known for her large bosom and frequent cleavage shots. Is that an actual... So she's not known for her play? No, she won on the cactus tour one time and failed to qualify for the LPGA tour in numerous attempts. Okay. So she's the Anna Kornikova of women's golf. Not even with that much success. Okay. Fair enough. Anna Kornikova made one tournament, you know? Okay. So yeah, Spade, Spade Spiranek, Paige Spiranek never even made the tour. So the fact that you, at, you said golfer told right. me what she does for a living. I've never heard of her before. Okay. All right. Did you? But yeah, yeah, I had, and I, I and I think I'm not going to be. I'm, I'm going to be honest with. You, I think I clicked on one of the uh, one of the clickbait things, like who's the who's the uh, hottest golfer or whatever, you know. And I actually, I never, I never heard of her, so I'm like, who is this? And I read about her stories, so I actually did read it a little bit. I have never heard of this person in my life. Okay, so you're going to say no then, even though she has more IG followers. Good for her. Yeah, and there's she knows why they're following her. They, they, she really does. I'm pretty so. sure she just wanted to get her name associated with Tiger, so that's why she threw her name in the ring there. Made the New York Post. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Smart marketing by her and her partner and her uh, people, I guess. Yeah. She's and she's a brilliant marketer because you know somebody that shoots, you know, 80 golf, seven, 70, probably doesn't shoot par golf. Making your name for yourself as the most popular golfer on Instagram. Well, that happened with Jeannie Bouchard in tennis, who was this Canadian up-and-coming player who struggled a bit lately. She made the news a couple of years ago for going on the date with that random fan on Twitter. You know what I'm talking about? Nope, not a bit. Okay, well, there was this tennis player who ended up, like, being asked out on 
Twitter or something. And she basically said, if you get X amount of likes on your tweet, I'll go out with you. And she actually went out with the fan. But she's like a part-time model, part-time whatever, and she hasn't won a tournament in like five years or so. Okay. Does that bother you? The people that are famous just for being famous and marketing themselves well without any real skills or talent? Oh, I thought you meant she never – because she never went out with me. Uh, no. Uh, did you, the, yeah, did you actually, ask her on – did you ask her on Twitter? No, I didn't do that. But the way that I'm looking at it is no. If you know that you are a pretty face or if you have an attractive body and you are willing to take Preaches photos choir, of buddy. yourself or you're willing to go down that road, then you're going to be successful. You're going to make money. Nobody's going to take you seriously as an athlete, but they'll take your bank account seriously. Okay. All right. I don't, have, I don't have an issue with it. You? Yeah. Whatever I, pays the bills. Yeah, I guess. It's just – it's old man. It's old man yells at You have cloud. an issue because they consider themselves athletes and they don't actually do anything to work on their craft. Yes. I think that's the issue. But I have the same issue, I have the same issue with influencers. Yeah, that's fair. Who have no actual skills. Just you know, Hey, whatever. hey, the Pauls are boxers now. Don't even – don't <laughs> – don't even get me started with those. The, the, I'm assuming the, that's the two people that you were referring to first. Oh, there's oh, there's so many. Top of, of my head, but most anyway, of, what, no, most however of you want to make I don't money, even know their names. You, yeah, however you want, whoever you want to make money, I'm not going to roast you for it. You know, okay. And rent's not cheap, so if you want to make money, uh, taking photos of yourself, getting sponsored, doing whatever, good for you. Whatever works. All right, fair enough. Scott, this young gentleman is fairly photogenic with the long hair and whatnot. It's Trevor Lawrence, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been named one of the team captains, which is odd because he's never played a professional football game, Scott, in the regular season. You okay with this? I would say no, but the Jets did the same thing with Zach Wilson, so I'm kind of roping them together. This makes no sense to me. I get that they are supposed to be the new franchise leaders and that they're going to be around for a while based on the rookie contract. Can you really lead a professional locker room if the people around you have been in significantly more games than you've been in? I think that this all comes down to how you are treated by your teammates. I don't think you could do this if you didn't have buy-in from the teammates. I think that in the case of Zach Wilson, in the case of Trevor Lawrence, the coaches have seen uh, is enough in training camp and through the preseason to make them believe that these young rookies command the respect of their teammates and the locker room and deserve to be named captain. That's that's my theory. I just don't think it's done in a vacuum. I don't I don't think I don't think if they were if they weren't in a position to do it, I don't think the coaches would do it. I'm going to give them that much benefit of the doubt. Now maybe I'm wrong and they're both yeah. idiots. I think you're probably right, but I do find it fascinating when you have somebody with significantly less experience in any job field and they're trying to give you advice or they're trying to tell you something about how to do your job or what the team should do. And you kind of just want to slap the person because you've been around longer than they have. But doesn't any young quarterback run into that problem, Scott? I'm assuming they do, which is why I'm aware that football is a little bit different situation, but everyone's had a, had somebody who works in an office or something with them who feels like since They are the ones, quote unquote, in charge, even if you've been there longer. You don't really want to hear them talk. You know what what I mean? Right. I I feel like a lot more people can understand that type of metaphor. So I'm fine with if the teammates like him, if they think that he's the guy who should be leading the team. But I do feel like you maybe could have waited a couple games. Can you left the spot vacant and then given it to him as he finished the first quarter or something? No. No? No, it's I'm I'm totally fine with. It. I think it's I think it's okay. At the end of the day, I don't know how much a team captain actually matters. You give occasional speeches, but the coaches do that too. Right? Do, do team captains have much of an actual role? The quarterback's supposed to talk to all the players because that's his job in the huddle. So I don't really know what else he's supposed to do. I don't believe it's a paid position. No, I don't believe. That's no, not paid. It. I'm just saying, like, I'm fine with it. I just find it a little bit interesting. Well, I mean, if you if you listen to that mic'd up stuff with like Mahomes in his well, what was his second year? He sat on the bench for his first year. Mm-hmm. You know, he sounds like a veteran in that huddle. You know, he's he's not afraid. He he commands the huddle. He tells guys what to do. Does it take a certain amount of personality? Does it take a certain type of personality? Do you think he developed that by being around the locker room situations? And do you think he had the uh, respect of his teammates? Or was it just a matter of him being on the roster for an entire year first? 
I think sitting behind Alex Smith, who was a leader in that locker room for several years, definitely helped when it came to how to conduct himself. As for the actual day-to-day life as a captain, I don't really know what that entails, but I am kind of curious who gave those two rookie quarterbacks advice as they went along. Right. Because both those rosters are relatively young. Very true. Now, would you have been all right? Would you have been okay if they would have made Trevor Lawrence a lieutenant? Uh, Colonel. No, Colonel's over captain. Yeah, Colonel. You don't start him as a Colonel. That's private. Just, that's ridiculous. Private. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. All right. Bye. I guess we should go over these in rehearsal if I'm going to drop, if I'm going to drop bomb metaphors. I would just throw in a bunch of random army positions and seeing what sticks. Commander, throw something out there. That's not a thing. You were, <laughs> you, you were out over your skis a little bit, and then you, you just crash landed right there, brother. I'm, I'm very sorry. I believe a commander, what is that, a nine in Stratego? Is that a, com- a ten there's, in no, Stratego? There's no, there's no There's field marshal. There's field marshal? There's no commander in Stratego. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I haven't played that game in a long time. <laughs> Okay, Great buddy. board game, though. Great board game. Hey, you know what we got? We got the NFL. You guys, stick around. We'll be right back after this break. I'm just going to do it every 15 minutes. Okay. Just, fuck it. Just, I'm just going to pound on the Keep deck. it consistent? Did 31. You didn't Were you think a bigger I... fan of Battleship or Stratego growing up? Stratego. I love Stratego. It was great. It was a great game. With the, do, you uh... believe, do you allow your guys to go over water or no? No. You don't? You have to go around the water, which takes up half the board? Yeah, it's a rule. I, I always win. You can go over water. You play, you play risk? Yes. You're, 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 you're a good risk player? Uh, I believe I'm okay. I'm the uh, owner of Northwest Territory basically every single time I play. Sounds like you're, trying to, you sound like you're trying to hustle me here, buddy. Kamchatka? It's, that's uh, the place you got owned. It wraps around. You know, I've played a little bit. I, maybe played I dabble. I roll. Three attackers versus two defenders, though, is really a flaw in the game. It, really, it favors the offensive team. <coughs> All right, everybody. Welcome back to the second half of Winners and Winners Radio. Give us an hour, and we'll give you the winners. Bum, 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 bum. I, probably, I, probably can't even, I probably can't even hum that without, without getting dinged. So. But be that as it may, it is – Football season, Scott, as is the tradition. We are going to see the Super Bowl champion open the season on Thursday night. Wait a second. You're telling me there's no more preseason? What am I supposed to bet on? What, what, happened, to, what happened to week four? What happened oh, to week four I'm, I'm going to miss taking unders in week four. That's a shame. Is, is it – anyone told you about – oh, man, I feel, I feel bad having to break this to you. We buddy. have actual starters playing. Who wants to see that? Come on. I want Dak's the fourth stringers play. in there. Dak's going to play. That's so a change here, of pace. Here's my question. Will the game be more boring than Hard Knocks? I didn't watch Hard Knocks, but I heard it was really bad. Yeah, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. I'm, I'm, I, I, could, I tried to binge it, and I could only get through like one episode at a time. Okay. So, spoiler alert, Dak doesn't play much. Uh, at all. Practice now, he does. Do you think he's going to be ready? Ready is not even the ankle. Do you think the shoulder's going to be? Let's let's start with the shoulder first. Let's start with the most recent injury. I think the shoulder's fine. Okay. I, I, as far as I know, it wasn't a serious sprain or anything like that. So I'm assuming the rest worked itself out. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue. The leg, I think, could affect him mentally if he wants to actually run with some open space. So I am curious if that will cause him to maybe hesitate leaving the pocket. So maybe that's something to keep in mind when you watch the game. Also, you can make the argument he hasn't been in an actual game situation in about, what, 10 months? Yeah, right at 10 and a half or so. So is he going to be rusty from a game perspective? There's really a lot of questions involving how Dak could look rusty from a variety of different angles, from a variety of angles. Right. Do you think this is the worst matchup for him to go against as far as coming back and trying to get his sea legs underneath him with this – ferocious front seven of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers I think he'd rather face Jacksonville it's 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 a pretty bad matchup there's really no way around it I have Dak on my fantasy team I got to contemplate if I want to bench him for week one or not because I think Tampa's going to make his life miserable but the weapons are there Zach Martin being out is going to really hurt because he's their best interior lineman we know Tampa stuffs the run so I don't expect Elliott to do much on the ground I'm assuming we're in agreement that Dak is probably going to have to throw the ball 40-something times because I'm assuming Tampa's going to force him to be one-dimensional. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. This is a team that just stuffs the run, just like you said. And 
again, they brought back everybody, you know, you and I have been doing college breakdowns and, you know, a lot of the, the, the big talking points are how many uh, players the teams brought back from one year to the next. They got 52 returning seniors. (laughs) Tampa Bay brought back all 22, right? Actually all everybody. Yeah. Coaching staff, nothing changed. Yeah. So that's, that's one of those things. And it's kind of, you know, the the chiefs kind of did the same thing. You know, everybody got a taste of that success and they wanted to stick around and get some more. And Tampa Bay did the same thing. So I think those are two good organizations that are doing it the right way. And obviously, I'm thinking of the one that blew it up were Seattle. I remember who had a serious issue when it came to losing mo- a decent amount of their players. Right. I think the Peyton Manning Broncos lost some players there. I mean, of course, Peyton retired after that, but I'm pretty sure those two teams had a hard time keeping the core intact. Yeah, that was like that was like the Miami Marlins, who blew it up twice. Well, they intentionally blew it up twice. Oh, so, right. Yes. But I mean, Denver had their, you know, they could, they, they could have worked it out. Yeah. Uh, they weren't going to work it out for Manning, nor do I think they wanted Manning back. I think there was nobody happier that. No, he was done. But I, I remember Seattle when they won, a lot of guys wanted a ton of money and they let like half of them go. Yeah, well, they broke up the Legion of Boom. Sherman, Sherman went and. Um, uh, Even the smaller guys like Bruce Irvin, I remember, wanted a bunch yep. of money. He was gone. They had a lot of guys who left. Yep. It's Brandon just, Browner. Uh, mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, I forgot about Browner. Yep, Browner absolutely went. So, Malcolm Smith got paid a bunch of money for winning the Super Bowl MVP. Malcolm Butler. No, Mal. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, oh, Malcolm, oh, Super Bowl MVP. Smith. Malcolm sorry, Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it. I, as a Chiefs fan, I really wish that I could find something bad to say about this Tampa Bay squad, other than the fact I can't. That- the weakness last year was Brady, and he was allegedly injured for the entire year, and now he's healthy. So I don't have any flaws with this team. But he seems just really good. He's 70, though. Isn't that yes. going to be a problem? Uh, he was good when he was 69, so maybe he'll be good when he was 70. But he was That's bad last year. Right there. He was bad last year, but then again, he had the surgery during the offseason, so you knew something was clearly wrong that he played through. I think you'll agree with me that he should look sharper, at least early in the season, if he needed the surgery, which I'm assuming he did. The Cowboys' defense is terrible. The offense could look rusty because Dak hasn't played in about 10 months. I don't know what exactly I like about the Cowboys in this spot besides the fact that they have the better kicker. Is that like the silver lining? I I don't know where they're better than Tampa. Where are they better than Tampa? Perhaps offensive line. I was going to say running back, I guess, but with Martin being out, Tampa's got the better offensive line. Yeah, I would I would call it at least a push, and you know I'll take I'll take Elliott over. Can we can we get can we get playoff Leonard? No, in week one, you're not getting a playoff guy in week one. He's going to be hung over for the playoffs. Come on, man. He's got to save his energy until week uh, seventeen. Yeah, that's probably that's probably true. I just I don't find much to like about this, and this was a uh, it's a ring ceremony too. It's right. just. Six and it was six and a half on the look ahead, and ever since it really opened here this week, it's been seven. It's now up to eight and a half. It's even nine and a half at a couple of spots. Not surprised. They wring all the value out of that. It's tough because, of course, you missed three points there. You could tease it if you want to, but at the end of the day, I think Tampa's winning by at least ten points. I just don't see how the Cowboys defensively can get enough stops, and the offense might be okay. The offensive line was a serious problem last year because of all the injuries. Now they're missing their best offensive lineman again. You still have to deal with Pierre Paul. Still got to deal with Barrett. They even drafted a good defensive lineman out of Washington who should be pretty good. The linebackers are good. The secondary is good. I just think the Cowboys are going to have to fight. I think Dak might put up decent numbers at the end for garbage time, but I'm assuming Brady's going to carve through that defense like a hot knife through butter, and I'm just assuming that the Cowboys offensively are going to struggle. So I think Tampa wins going away two touchdowns. I wouldn't be, that that wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me. It it really wouldn't. Um, That happened week one last year. I know Houston turned out to be a dumpster fire, but that was a close playoff game kind of because Houston was up to a big lead. And then everyone went into the game in week one and said, Kansas city is just better at basically every position and Kansas city won by double digits. I think it's going to be a similar story. Let me let me ask you this because you've got the you've got a new defense as they forced out Mike Nolan after one year giving up almost thirty points a game, Scott twenty nine point two points per game to the Cowboys surrender last year. 
And of course they brought in Dan Quinn, your favorite from, from Atlanta. And Quinn pretty much is the master of the, the single high, the, the single high safety or the, uh, the, uh, the middle closed defense, if you will. And that defense requires uh, two really good cornerbacks and a good free safety. Does that sound like uh, Diggs, Brown, and uh, Kazee to you? Well, I think that Diggs is okay. I think Jordan Lewis is mediocre, but the answer is no. If you combine all of those corners, maybe you'll have one decent corner, but that's not how it works. Right. You just have so many problems. You got Edmonds on one side. You got Godwin. You got Antonio Brown. You got – Is that hands down, not even close, don't even start the conversation, the best receiving core in football? Even including tight ends, I'm going to say yes, because Kansas City doesn't have a second wide receiver. Right. Yeah, they so, don't – Yes, I think Let Tampa's, alone a third. Correct. So I think Tampa's absolutely loaded. And if this issue is a secondary, we, you can argue about the scheme with Nolan. And I don't think Nolan was a good defensive coordinator. He had no talent on that, set, on that team. I, I don't know how he was supposed to succeed. You could have tried to run the 85 Bears system. They would have gotten torched. It didn't matter. They didn't have the talent. Where, where have they upgraded that gives you hope as a Cowboys fan? It's a great question. That defense. Uh, you can argue linebacker because Van Der Esch was injured for a decent amount of last year. He's back now. You got Parsons. Of course, you lost Sean Lee, but he was always injured anyway. I guess linebacker, but defensive line, Lawrence, if he's healthy, can give you something. But this secondary is a mess. Yeah, and that's not a good. That's not, that's not a good look to go against Tampa Bay, right? Not quite. Do you think Micah Parsons is going to be the real deal? I think he's going to be very good. Do I think it matters? No. I think this team needed more than a linebacker. But you got to start somewhere. Okay. You wish they'd have had more defensive backfield help. Uh, it wasn't their fault. I mean, they were going to go for Sertan, who got taken by Denver, basically the pick before them. That's why the Cowboys traded with Philly backwards, because they didn't have a guy to pick. They would have taken a corner. There wasn't one on the board. So they took the best player available a couple picks later. Okay. It's unfortunate, yeah. but they were going to take Sertan. Yeah, do you think they should have stretched the corner there? Uh, at the end of the day, the Cowboys have so many holes defensively. I'm not sure one corner even changes anything. Okay. It was, uh, a bottom, it was a bottom five unit last year. I think it could be bottom 10, so maybe they'll improve a little bit. But it's not good. Give me a prediction for Cowboys record. Okay. Um, I think Washington's going to win the division. Yep. I think Washington's going, I'm going to say 10 and 7. That's so I got number. Dallas going, I'm going to say nine and eight with a very painful loss in the final week of the season to get eliminated from the playoffs. You? I was going to say probably eight and nine. I was I going get... to say eight and nine, but knowing the Cowboys, you got to make it extra painful for your fans in the final week. So they're going to be in contention to some degree. I think they, they, have enough, they have enough offensive talent to win some games. They do, but they're going to actually give up. Or, I don't know if they're going to give up 30 this year. 27 and a half is Dallas a dead over team until further notice I'm gonna wait to see what he can get from Dak for the over in this game I'd be tempted but Tampa's defense could just shut the door I gotta like the over the Cowboys are gonna have so many big plays they play in a dome the defense is terrible you gotta like the overs they're gonna be huge I mean they're gonna be in the mid 50s all season long but I can't take unders with this team can you no I, I wouldn't especially when once it gets to be you know 27-10 or whatever, and, and Dallas or, or Tampa Bay just starts playing soft. Yep. Um, I think I think you could get enough in garbage time, too. Uh, I, don't, I, I think it probably goes over. I don't think it's a no sweat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, final score prediction? Uh, what was the total on this one? It's uh, 51 and a half. It's actually come down a little bit from 52. I'm going to say 34 to 20. 34 20? I'm picking Tampa. You? I think that's pretty solid. I'll go with, yeah, I'll go, I'll go with, I'll go with 37, 17. I don't see the Cowboys getting many stops. I, I just don't see that happening. No, no, I, I, I totally agree. So, Hey, what's your, uh, we, we haven't talked about it much. What's your uh, favorite for like rookie of the year? You got any, you got any prop favorites for uh, NFL futures? Well, for rookies, it's always tough. My question for you is, do you want to gamble on any of the quarterbacks for offensive rookie? Do you think a position player can win it? I think no. I think he's going to a quarterback. There's just so many, de there's so many good options there. If I had to pick one, I would probably end up picking 
Lawrence because the defense is so bad that they might be playing catch up for the entire fourth quarter of pretty much every game, which should right. pad his numbers, which was the Blake Bortles effect, which is why he helped me win a fantasy championship a couple of years ago. Shout out to you, Blake Bortles. But for the most part, I think it's going to be one of the quarterbacks. Mac Jones, I like as a player, but I got to assume Belichick's going to coddle him. I think you're going to see a lot of running plays, a lot of game management. And the Jets, I want to I wanna say Zach Wilson has a shot to win the award, but – I don't know if they can protect them, which is going to be a serious problem because the offensive line isn't exactly a strength for the Jets. And it might not be a strength really for the Jaguars either, but Lawrence is mobile. He's bigger. He can take a beating. I think that Lawrence will probably win the award. And as for the defensive rookie of the year, it's really tough. I'm not picking Parsons. I think you have an argument for him if he's going to do well in tackles. But if I was going to actually take a potential, I'd say, stab with a defensive Rookie of the year, I think Sertan's really good, just talent-wise. So if you think he has a big year in Denver, I think he can maybe do something. I'm okay. trying to figure out what price that is. But – Yeah, um, very good. By the way, guys, quick reminder, you are listening to Winners and Winners Radio. Give us an hour. We'll give you the winners. And Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, both plus 400. Zach Wilson, plus 500. And then Field, 750. Lance, 750. So there's your five quarterbacks right there. You know what? For defensive rookie of the year, I'll take a stab here. I'll go with Zayvon Collins, 14 to 1. I don't hate that. I just think he's a good player. Okay. All right. Very good. And you have uh, – I, I know you have Dak as a, as a slam dunk for comeback player of the year. I think that based on the severity of the injury – and how he was carted off and all that happened and the fact that it's the Cowboys and the media is going to talk about Dak every time. Dak could throw three interceptions. They would still show the completions because they love talking about the Cowboys. So I th- he'll get all the media coverage. It's a, it's a good story. Assuming Dak doesn't get injured at some point, which, of course, is a question mark. He's plus 210. If he has any big game on primetime and the Cowboys are always on primetime, he'll be a minus at some point during the season. Yeah, you think I people think- are watching Cincinnati? Not on purpose, no. Correct. So I'm going to go with Dak because you know he's going to get them exposure. Okay. All right. You? Very good. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think that's pretty solid. I you know I liked I, I liked I liked uh, Laurent Duvernay Tardif uh, of the Chiefs, but he's I, know, gonna, I don't know if he's going to play. That's the thing. He's got a hand problem. He's pretty much been uh, that year off cost him and cost him his, his starting spot, and then uh, you know getting the broken hand there in training camp pretty much mm-hmm. solidified his second string status. So. You know, just to, just for grins. I'm I'm about the storyline for the comeback player of the year because you're gonna have a couple of people who have good who have actual good stats, but there's always gonna be a narrative involved. And with the Cowboys and the Prescott contract stuff, and they paid you them, it to, and you give it to just Christian so many McCaffrey good st- at, at nine to one. If he if he puts up two thousand all purpose yards, you give it to McCaffrey. I love McCaffrey as a player. I mean, I don't think he's going to win it because, once again, are people actually going to watch Carolina? Okay. I, I stick to narratives when it comes to these awards, and the, all the narrative checkpoints are by Dak, pretty much. Famous Jameis, plus 500. That's just funny. I, it's, I see plus 1,000 on DraftKings, but okay. we'll see if he has a less than 20 interceptions, maybe. But I think Barkley has a good story because he's gotten injured the last couple of years. But once again, based on media exposure and everything, I just think Dak has a huge leg up on the competition. Coach of the year, you locking into Vic Fangio, twenty-two to one. Uh, first coach to be fired, maybe. But for coach of the year, Staley's the favorite. I have a hard time fully embracing the Chargers not falling apart in the fourth quarter of games because I'm so used to it at this point. But uh, Urban Meyer, fourteen to one, makes me laugh because that team's going to be terrible. Same thing with Smith. Belichick, I think, is tempting at 12-1 to 1, if you yeah. think that maybe they can sneak something together. I like McDermott at 18-1 to 1, if you think Buffalo can actually have the best record in the AFC. I think they got a shot. But Staley makes sense because he's taken over a new team and they've underachieved. But I'm assuming half the Chargers are getting injured at some point during the season. Are we sure they're actually going to win double-digit games? The franchise is cursed, isn't it? Kind of what they do. Uh, Aren't they cursed? It seems that way. I'll take Riverboat Ron, buddy. Okay. I think we're, I got him at nine to one. You got a better price than that? Uh, for Rivera, I see 20 to one on DraftKings. That's a little better price. Shop yeah. your lines, kids. Quick yeah. reminder. 
All right, buddy. Well, that's it for football. I'm ready. I'm ready for some football. Let's do it. All right. Let's talk about a little baseball. How about that? Yep. Got a, a really, really short schedule. Uh, we've got, what, just seven games? Eight, eight games and one day game, Scott. So Nice. What do you like? Don't, and don't, don't say L.A. Dodgers because that's the early – or don't say the L.A. St. Louis game. That's the early game. I already said Dodgers plus six and a half runs, right? Uh, to start yeah, the show, our, but it's our, lock, it's our lock of the day. Yeah, it's our double, triple whale supreme combo deal. What, whatever. Anyway, um, I'm looking at Baltimore in this spot. Baltimore's offense has looked sharp in this series, while Kansas City's offense has looked okay. Means is a guy who hasn't been amazing lately, but we know that his ceiling is higher than Hernandez's, who could be getting it done through smoke and mirrors. Kansas City in this series has just concerned me because they've had so many opportunities and it seems like they just squander pretty much all of them. I just think Baltimore finds a way to win. You? I'm on the other side, buddy. Um, okay. I've, seen, I've seen Chris Hernandez. I think, he, I think he's really good. You're catching the Royals. Plus 115, Baltimore's lost six straight John Means starts. And obviously not all of them have been his fault. I just think that Baltimore offensively has been in more of a groove in this series. That's that's un- unquestionably true. There, there's no question about that. I think Hernandez could be the equalizer. Although, obviously, as we found out yesterday, if he can't go nine, they could be in trouble. Well, I was going to say both bullpens apparently are a push because they're both terrible. Good God. Um, the nice thing about Hernandez, he's given up two or less in a six of his last seven. So he does he does have some skills, my friend. So okay. we'll we'll see. And uh, but means you know been pitching well. He's a he's. He's pretty much turned into a solid, what, three starter where he's going to go out there and give you six innings, give up two or three runs. Yeah, he's fine. Have an ERA around four, so he's a low three, high four starter. Just try to intentionally walk Perez, and you'll find the offense a lot easier to deal with. Are we, are we, going, to, are we going to smash the Perez home run? By the way, since we said to smash that at better than two to one, I said play it every day. It's gone one and one, so you're, you're, up, a, you're up 100 if you're catching it at a plus 200 on South Perez. You, you bet it again today. I'm not doing it, but you can if you want. All day. I've, I've done it twice. I'm going to do it again. I'm looking at the Mets team total over four and a half against Lazardo. Lazardo burned me his last time out. I can't say he pitched well. He was awful in the first couple of innings, then Philly's offense completely just shut down after that. But the Mets, this offense is a bit streaky, but Lazardo is just a guy who's going to constantly walk guys. They're going to have guys on base. And, of course, you can, for, you can take a Campbell – to the actual river he can't make a drink if the Mets get guys on base and they don't end up scoring that's fine but yeah. I think if they get guys on base and you're getting four and a half you'll have enough opportunities to be in a good spot to cash it okay by the way if you're playing a team total over and they get guys on base and don't score that's not fine that's the opposite of fine it's not fine but I'm saying that that's the logic is they're gonna have guys on base I want to hear more about this drinking camel that's <laughs> uh, the expression you know you can the horse drink. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Same thing with a camel. No, camels they, have humps. They don't need to drink. They go all the way across the desert. So you're telling me they never fill up the humps with water? Never take a sip. It's never, unbelievable. Ever. It's freak of nature. They're just dehydrated yes. the entire time. They're dehydrated. They're living in the desert. They got no water. Okay. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It's because I don't believe it. <laughs> but sure. I'm with you on, I'm with you on Faden Lazardo. He was... Like you said, he was eh, his last time out, three or three earned in five and two thirds. He, he battled, really, but his command is all over the place. Well, he was really good the time before that against against Cincinnati, and then then you, you know the drill. You know we've been fading him ever since he got traded. So I say he falls back in his old Jesus patterns. I agree with you there. Yeah, or if you're scared of it, maybe take the over seven and a half if you think there's a chance Strowman struggles. That way you get two shots at it. But I think Lazardo is just not very good. Are you are you like tempting? If you're are you, are you kind of like taunting people out there, Scott? If you're scared, then I'm go. I'm saying if you're scared and you want the Marlins offense to help you out there, then, you know, you can take a sniff on the full game over. I think I would be scared if I was counting on the Marlins offense to do anything at all. This is – it's, it's a heartbreaking situation. I wish they had anybody that could hit. By the way, uh, one more. Talk about the other New York team. Sure. Yan- Yankees are favored again? You serious? Absolutely, buddy. I mean, it's not as bad. It's minus 115 now. They've been getting smacked this entire series. These games haven't even been close. What are we doing? The Yankees have fallen apart. I don't know. I, I don't. It's, it, it's the Yankees tax working in our favor. We've, we've talked about it a lot this year. It's the Yankees tax, and people bet it because it's the Yankees. And it's even more pronounced now that there's sports books on the East Coast, Scott. Yeah. 
for, for us people out here in flyover land, it's just the gift that keeps on giving, you know? And Faith. I think Cortez is decent, but I think Barrios yeah. is pretty good too. You, you, you can't pass it up at even money. I'm you sorry. Can't. You can't. It's, it's too tempting. The Yankees have fallen apart. Toronto has been hot. Toronto, I might have given them the reverse jinx you needed because they've been rolling lately. Yeah, they, they really have. They've, uh, they've won seven straight. They've got nine and one over their last ten. What are they, like two out of the wild card now? They are just a game and a half. Hanging around. Behind the Yankees, Scott. Yeah. They, are, they are making some hay against the boys from New York. So, you know, they, if they win there, going to be a half a game with, what do they got, about 23 games left, 24, somewhere in that neighborhood. Anything got yourself in- a dogfight. You got yourself a dogfight right there. You only have to count on one of those teams to suck, Boston or New York. I, I like your chances. Yeah, Seattle's right back in it. They've gone seven and three over their last ten. Could be fun. Could be fun watching them battle for the wild card coming down the stretch. Anything else grab you? Not really. Uh, that's kind of it. I'd look at Atlanta maybe, but after the no show against Nolan yesterday, I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, that's really with the. Uh, I like Yanoa on the mound. Maybe. I'm not a Fetty guy, but how do you not torch Nolan yesterday? Yeah, I, I agree. No, I, I'm I'm totally with you. And this you talk about an inconsistent offense that that Atlanta offense, and they're also just bad at home for some reason. It's really weird too. So you you, you take a, you take a little dog shot there on Fetty? No, I'm completely passing. Okay, all right, very good. Um, there's one game that we like though. Yeah, there is, there is, and uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it's time to get to it, Scott. Let's take a look. You and I have put our heads together, come up with our very best play of the day, the one that we like more than anything else. If you had to put all your chips in the middle, if you had to bet it all, this is the game you could do it. Folks, it's time to strap on those overalls, climb on your John Deere, fire that bad boy up, because you can get ready to bet the arm. All right, very good. We are going to take a look at the Phillies and the Rockies. This is going to be the Phillies team total over four and a half. Scott, now there's a couple caveats about this that I want to say. First of all, this is a line that is available. MG, Bet MGM always comes out with the earliest team total lines. So this game, as it stands right now, Philadelphia is a Roughly 195 favorite. The total in this game is eight and a half. Scott, there is no planet I have ever heard of where you're getting the favorite in a game where it's eight and a half at four and a half, just minus 110. It's it's completely unheard of. For that reason alone, you have to make this play a hundred times out of a hundred opportunities. Do you agree? Uh, yes, but we also have some stats on why we actually oh, like the abso- Phillies together. Absolutely. No, I just, and I just wanted to make sure because you guys may, by the time you hear this, it most likely won't be available. You're probably I'm assuming 25 or 30 is probably where it's going to be. At least. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be surprised to see one minus 135 or minus 140. You could even see five and a half. So at five and a half, I don't even hate it. And here's why because the Rockies. They are not playing good ball right now, at least from the pitching standpoint. They've allowed at least six runs in each of their last five games. The Phillies, in their last four home games, they've scored exactly seven runs, my friend. And funny story, the game after that, even though they went on the road, they also scored seven runs. So five straight games, Phillies scored uh, seven runs. Antonio Sensatella is pitching for Colorado, Scott. He is typical of Colorado pitchers he is decent at home and he is horrific on the road he's made one stop one start against Phillies the Phillies this year five innings pitched 7.20 ERA no bueno give me the Phillies at an absolute steal team total over four and a half minus 110 and that's going to do it for our bet the farm play and of course that is going to do it for our show for today you guys appreciate you watching appreciate you listening thanks very much tell your friends we do this every day We'll see you again tomorrow on Winners and Winers Radio. Take care, everybody.